Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Out on a Limb podcast. And today we're going to be talking about a topic that we have heard from a lot of people that is um, Mm -hmm. kind of commonplace, and that is dreams of rising water. We're definitely interested in hearing in the comments if you guys have had any dreams of rising water and what that looked like for you. Um, But since really, I have some notes here, since around 2021, towards the end of 2021, Mm -hmm. um, this has been coming into our awareness Mm -hmm. through friends and people that we know. Uh, talking about this topic. And when when you see some themes and some similarities, you start to pay attention, right? Mm-hmm. Connect the dots. Phenomenon. Right. So back in 2021, in December, actually, we did channel about this and we got some information mm-hmm. from the collective that we want to share with you. Um, but it's also come up again recently now uh, yeah, in the past like several cycl- months. It's kind of like cycling back through again. And yep. I think our friend Wendy actually asked in one of the monthly channelings, maybe in October, November, okay. uh, about a rising water dream she had. doesn't know. <laughs> I don't know. And so yeah. the topic came up again. So I'm curious if you all have been having this for quite some time or is it new to you, these rising water dreams? So well, I like when the phenomenon, you know, the phenomenon, like when you, when something happens mm-hmm. and I turn around and I send a message to you and you're like, oh, let me pull that from the channeling. Mm-hmm. It's like, right. there's always this accumulation of information that yep. we've got like a database of stuff mm-hmm. to go to now. Yeah. So, and I will so give cool. a plug to my my beautiful friend, Samantha Carver, who, um, <laughs> you're going to say me, you're like, I know a lot of Samantha, you Samantha Carver, you know a lot of Samantha, wait a minute, it's not me, but Samantha Carver, puffing up. go ahead, <laughs> this is for you, Samantha Carver, Samantha Carver yeah. transcribes all of our monthly channelings, yes. and she has been doing this for a number of years, and it is a true blessing, we're so thankful awesome. for her to volunteer to do that, but because she does that, I am able to take a Word document Mm-hmm. And I have every single channeling that we've done Over publicly, five publicly no. since 2018. And I have them all <clears throat> sequential in one big document. So I can just hit control F and find That's how you do that so quickly. Right. So if somebody has a topic that they're interested in, or, Hey, is the, mm-hmm. the collective ever talked about this? I can kind of find it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. so, yeah, rising water dreams were one of those things. And so because mm-hmm. you had one recently, this mm-hmm. topic came up again. Yeah. So you actually had two recently, didn't you? Well, the other one was back in, see, we met in 2020. Mm-hmm. The other one was, was in 2020. 2020. Yeah, yeah. We met in 2020? The end of 2020. Are you? Yeah. yeah. Has it been that long? Mid, yeah. Mid-summer to late summer. Holy that, cow. That's when Judy, yeah, that's when Judy. It seemed like just together. yesterday almost, mm-hmm. doesn't yeah. it? That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, but uh, so it's 2022 is when I had my first one. Mm. And then, um, so that was kind of close to when everybody else was having them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, um, and then just last week. So why don't you go with the first one, that very first one that you had, and we'll, um, see if this sounds similar to what you Mm -hmm. all are getting. Yeah. So, um, and I try, like, I have very vivid dreams. So I've got to like pare this down as much as possible, but, um, essentially, you know, it was like not, you know, there's different ways you perceive dreams, but this was where I was this person, this, um, old Japanese man in an internment camp. Like, uh, I, I like it's as I was going, what is going on here? All the information would come through. So it was like, I was a political prisoner living in kind of a, I say cinder block. It wasn't, you know, it was that kind of just concrete kind of building. And I had my own space. I remember I had, you know, just a couple of things to cook with and stuff like that. Um, And it's kind of a stormy night. And so there's other political prisoners that, you know, it's kind of like we're in a village kind of thing, but there's guards on towers with guns that are making sure we don't get out. Um, But I just remember like I was really old, but it was the information I had, like Mm -hmm. I would um, get people dissenting or something. Anyway, Mm -hmm. so there's um, it's stormy and everything. And I remember I'm just being very calm with this storm and like there's no electricity, maybe just powering the um, the guard towers Mm -hmm. or whatever. And as it's it's raining, I noticed that there's water, like it's not just accumulating in puddles, like it's coming in. Mm. And um, I'm look, I kept going out and gauging it, like it's how far it's coming up um, Mm -hmm. to the cement block that my house is on the pad. And so, you know, I'd go and I would just calmly gather a few more things and I would go and I'd look and I could hear people kind of yelling and you know, a little bit of chaos going out there, but I was just like, okay, you know, and I remember that sense of peace that I had Mm. and I gathered a few more things and I was like, okay, you know, I shut my door and I step out 
And I, I, it's like, I knew that there was, which is crazy. I knew that there was a way out, Mm -hmm. like nobody else knew it, but I knew there was a way out. And so I was very calm and I knew that I was exiting there and it wasn't my job. It wasn't, I, it wasn't necessary for me to tell anyone else. Right. Right. So that was my first one. And and it was so vivid. Like it was, what do you call it? Say cinema, cinema, Graph, cinemagraphic or whatever yeah. it i mean i could say oh the lighting has to come from here you know like it was so intense vivid yeah would yeah. you say it would be more of a lucid dream where it was in color and you could control oh, totally okay yeah yeah, yeah. completely yeah. like okay. i knew like I, I swear if i could look up history and find this gentleman find that yeah yeah interesting wow yeah. he was <laughs> just you know very zen wow. he was very cool well do you brought up a couple of key points that mm-hmm. seem to be consistent throughout these dreams that people are having. And the first one is most of the people that we've talked to have mm-hmm. felt calm and yep. at peace yep. mm-hmm. and they're not worried about the rising water. And you mentioned that you knew what to do. You yeah. knew kind of how to get out of that situation or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I want to first read the channeling that happened back in December, 2021, when everyone was having those dreams and what the collective said about it. And then we have some channeled material from recently, which is very similar. Mm -hmm. So what they said was this rising of water, this sense of increasing pressure is just that. It's the awareness of what is globally taking place. It will be this sense of being covered over by what is taking place around this planet. But there is a greater awareness of being orchestrated of presence in that situation, Mm. being present in that situation and being okay meaning that there is a point at which you have come to an understanding that you are steadfast in your truth, no matter what encircles you, no matter what encroaches upon you, Mm -hmm. you are steadfast in your understanding and you have the control to understand what needs to be done for it is not to overtake you. So that's really significant um, that you have the presence in those, Mm -hmm. in that dream. This Mm -hmm. is an example of that um, because what the collective has been saying since I guess the big C started in 2020 and things have just ramped up in chaos Mm -hmm. uh, is that that's what we're all sensing. And you may not, uh, you may not get dreams of water. It might be um, a metaphor in a different way in your dreams, but the, the water metaphor is uh, very common. And so it is representing that energy of kind of chaos and uncertainty that's in the the collective consciousness Mm -hmm. and how you, when you know your truth and you stand in your truth, which we talked about Mm -hmm. uh, in an episode not too long ago about standing in your truth and speaking your truth and all of that. That's why it's so important to know your truth and to stand in it. Because what they say is when you're steadfast in your truth, no matter what encircles you. So in your dream, it's water, but in the Mm -hmm. real world, it might be other things. Mm -hmm. uh, You know that whatever encroaches on you, you can control it and be okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. So fantastic. So you had one too, didn't you? Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I don't know the time frame of it, but it was about maybe two years ago or so. Um, I'm guessing 2021 ish. Right. Um, and it was um, basically a scene unfolding where I was kind of on a cliff um, overlooking a city, uh, a cityscape. And the, and there was, I don't want to say an ocean. The best image that I can come up with, if if you're familiar with the um, Inception, the movie Inception, oh, where, yeah. right, the beach scene where at near the end where he's in this city and it's kind of all crumbling down and water's washing in and all this. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it was similar to that where, but I'm up high looking down and seeing this rising water and all the people kind of scurrying around doing what they're needing to do to maybe keep themselves safe but all the while I'm feeling at this place of peace, this place of calm. Like I knew, and it wasn't because I was up high and I wasn't going to be affected by it, yeah. but I just knew that everything was going to be okay because, you know, even in the dream, I I didn't look at the water as being something, you know, something bad or something where it was going to kill people, but it was more of the change that was taking place. Mm-hmm. And so I felt okay with that change, no matter whatever that change was, I was feeling okay with it. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so it was just, a, and it wasn't a very long dream. And I, and unlike you, I, I don't have very, or overly vivid dreams, like, you know, uh, I'll say lucid dreams or, or dreams that are, you know, easily recallable, but when they, when I can, that's, you know, that's what comes through. So, but when we, after that, after I brought that dream up to Alice and, um, 
And we kind of put it out into a couple small groups and, and a bunch of people started kind of chiming in and saying, yeah, Hey, I'm having kind of a very Same. similar dream. Yeah. <laughs> of, of this aspect of rising water and, and being okay with the, whatever's taking place, the chaos or the, 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 whatever the, you know, whatever's going on in front of us. So do you remember in that dream, <clears throat> whether you felt an urge to help people or to try to save people or was no, that I, not? It, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a feeling that I needed to help or wanted to help. It was just that I was more of an obs observer mm -hmm. of the whole, the whole, I don't want to say the whole aspect or the whole scene, but as a whole, I was just really observing everything in it. And so when I look at, well, I'll say past, you know, past 2020 or 2021, even in the midst of all that, I always found myself at a place of, of kind of observing everything and not being, a, I don't want to say associated, but not being fully engaged mm -hmm. with what's taking place. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, being, so we've talked about this before and it might've been even on the podcast, we've talked about it uh, kind of on the edges of it, but like when you could look at the media headlines and, and the media headlines are exploding with all of this crap that's taking Vitriol. place. What's that? Vitriol. Yeah, vit right. Vitriol. Every, let's, right. And, let's make it light. And it's, and they're saying that, <laughs> Fear -mongering. Oh, right. We're falling into chaos and mm -hmm. we're blah, 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 blah. And yet we get into the car and we drive down the street and we're like, where's the chaos? Where's where where is all this? In our circle, right? Yeah, we're our okay. Bubble. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's and I and it's it's the it's the perceived world that we create in front of us. So having that place of of comfort of understanding that it's everything is okay, everything in everything in my my world, everything in our world, in our friends' world, everything's okay, everything is just fine, but. We have to be observant and we have to, and I think even that has come out through some of the channels, yes. this, this aspect of being a, a peaceful or neutral observer. Right. And being just a bit prepared, but not in a way that it's, 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 um, end of world or end of right. times. Not or, preparing out of fear. Not yeah. preparing out of fear. Thank you. That's, right. that's what I was right. trying Listening to get at. Yeah. The nudges, yeah. the, the, oh, maybe I should pick up an extra this. Maybe right. I should do yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Right. Because you. What we saw with the big C, right, was that as soon as people get into that state of panic and fear, all rational thought goes mm -hmm. right out the window. You really cannot, and you know this from your own life, I know that I do, mm -hmm. uh, when you're afraid, you really cannot think straight. Right. Well, think, okay, for those listeners who live on the uh, East Coast, we know that when a hurricane comes along, no. like mm -hmm. that is the worst time to be out on the road. Because right. people just, they're like that shit crazy. Like they yep. start doing like irrational things. They buy irrational things. They like the the whole feel. And the thing is, it, it's energy. Yeah. So it's all, yeah, everybody's picking up on it, whether they realize it or not. And it ramps up and it ramps up. And all of a sudden you are so disconnected from that higher self that's trying to say, go left, mm -hmm. go right. Mm -hmm. go right. This. So, right. Yeah. So not only can you not think rationally, but you can't mm -hmm. hear your intuition. You, you yep. can't right. tune in. And that, those subtle messages are what's going to get us through because mm -hmm. those subtle reminders to stand in your truth and to go with what you know, that's what we keep hearing from the collective a lot is mm -hmm. remember, remember what you know and operate from that space. Yeah, yeah. So all of that, again, was about around the end of 2021, 2022. Uh, and then recently this came up again through your mm -hmm. dream. Do you want to share that one as well? Yeah. So my, um, my other dream, which was just like last week and I was like, oh my God, I've got to tell Alice. <laughs> Um, and you did, you actually were still half asleep. Yeah. And yeah. I said, are you, I was like, are you sick or did you just wake up? Cause you sound. I did a good job. Like getting. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, in this dream um, it, and it's fun to tell people who like they're familiar with Hilton head and they know mm -hmm. this location. So that's why I'm going to mention this um, just cause I thought this was so specific, but um, so there's a place in Hilton head in sea pines called lot and stables. And um, when the heritage comes around. It used to be, and I don't know if they still do this, but they would take down um, some of the fence posts where the horses are normally pastured and they would um, put cars there. Well, so it's this event takes place in that lot mm. and, um, and they've built a stage that's like closer, like a band stage or whatever, closer to the road. And so like you would be sitting back looking towards this band stage that sits along the road and then there's parking off to one side. And it was kind of like a Spoleto type event. It's like a musical mm -hmm. event, a mini, just a one day kind of thing. 
And so um, I'm in the first section and I don't know if any of it's important. It's just like, but it was so precise that I'm yeah. like, remember the details. So I'm in the back row of the first section. And I remember um, like looking out and suddenly like it hasn't started yet. We're waiting for it to start. Not everybody's seated or anything, you know, it's still kind of milling around. And all of a sudden I see this wall of water, like a tsunami coming towards me. And it's not like I'm looking up there. I mean, it's like, it's, it's, you know, as tall as a house yeah. maybe, or a little bit taller and it's coming towards me. And I remember thinking, okay, I've, I like, I wasn't thinking, oh, there's chairs in front of me. There's this or that. You know, I remember thinking, okay, I need to decide whether I'm going to, and I'm sure this is significant, whether I'm going to dive into it or whether I, I should let it break for like, I could move yeah. forward and dive into it, or I could wait for it to break and then it'll rush up around me. And I remember thinking this. And then next thing I know, like it's a reset, like I, I I'm out of that and I'm at this event. So like, this is a dream within a dream because I'm at the event and I'm going, you know, whoa, okay. And, um, a couple of different things happened. Like there were still the same things, mm -hmm. but this one person that I know, um, who had posted something about sushi the night before. So I think that's why it was in my mind. So I was like, yeah, they don't have a drummer. So you, and he's a drummer. I'm like, you could, you could go up there like weird little shifts like that. And, um, but it wasn't a feeling of deja vu. Like I'm just, everything's just normal and stuff. And then all of a sudden I see this wall of water and I'm like, oh, I had this dream. I remember this dream. Mm. So it was not deja vu. That's a whole different feeling. Right. I'm like, I had this dream, wow. you know? And so the water is coming towards me and I, you know, people are freaked out now because it's not a dream, even though it's a dream, but then a dream, you know? <laughs> um, so in, in this secondary state, the, the people are freaking out yeah. and some are running to their cars and other people are going, don't go to your car because then you'll drown in your car. You don't know what will happen. You know, you got to run. And, and so it's kind of mass hysteria. And I remember just standing there and the water broke before me and it just rushes up past me. So this time I'm actually mm -hmm. in the water, but it's, it was only like about ankle height or something nope. by the time it got to me. And so they weren't going to drown in their cars. Um, <laughs> and then it's like, I must have um, gone with a bunch of other people back to a further position away mm -hmm. from the source of the water. And I remember um, it's like this, people would know at a sea pine center, anybody mm -hmm. who's been on Hilton head. So I'm back at this place, sea pine center that's back from the, um, the stables. And um, I'm sitting like, at this cafe table. And I'm like, I'm lucky I got to you know, be able to sit here. And mm -hmm. there are these women sitting over next to me and they're flipping through these books and they're trying to figure out. And this woman leans over to me and she's like, do they have mines here? <laughs> mines. And so she's trying to under, like, I realized what she was doing. They were trying to find an explanation for the source of the water, the mm -hmm. wave. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, you know, I could have been so snarky. I could have been like, you know, I could, there's so many ways I could have responded, but I looked at her and I just calmly, I was just like, we're on an Island. Mm -hmm. We don't even have basements, you know, <laughs> right. Cause I realized they weren't from around here. You yeah. Know? And I was just very calm and trying to calm them down. And um, at the same time, I was trying to call my girlfriend. I remember I was trying to call my girlfriend, Diana, to let her know. Um, and like she's so she and I met about a year, a little over a year ago. And lots of crazy stuff since last um, mm -hmm. August, September has been happening just off the charts, yeah. you know, reality shifting, weird events happening. And so she's been kind of that marker point for me. Mm -hmm. I, I've talked to her about every single thing that's happened. And, um, and she's so been open and receptive, even though she was not a part of the woo woo world. So it's been a lot of fun. So it was interesting that she was the person I was trying to call yeah, and, um, and explain to her what was happening. And then like, oh, somebody's dog outside real life, um, barks and wakes me up from it. And I'm kind of going, I wanted to Darn know it. what was going to happen <laughs> next, you know? <laughs> But um, so that's then, of course, I immediately call Allison. You're not going to believe this, you know, and because um, Allison's the real person I call like whenever like the weird <laughs> stuff happens, she is the bearer of all knowledge. Right. Right. Um, and that's because I put it all together and I take notes. Yeah. And then so we, she's like compare notes. Oh, my God. Now, did you see the water? What was your state of being? Were mm -hmm. you in the was water actually around you? You know, and it's like so cool. So this time, yes, the water was you know, I was actually in the water. 
And then you're like, oh, there's something important. About but you that. were still calm. Yeah. I mean, it was just like, everyone else is freaking out. And it's not like I'm going, La, you know, mm-hmm. but I just remember, you know, it's just like, I, there was no decision of, do I dive in? Do I do this? It's just like, just stand in it, you know, mm-hmm. just stand there. That's almost like I, standing in your truth, right? right? Standing in what you know right. and what you understand. And, and, it, and, that, and it's interesting that you say that it's a dream within a dream and that, and that secondary dream is where you actually take action from all of the stuff you learned in the first dream. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like all the knowledge you had in that first dream of going, oh, what should I do? Maybe I should do this and do all that stuff. You knew exactly what to do. Oh, wow. I didn't in think the about it like second, that. In the second dream, right? Yeah. You stood there. You there stood There was no firm. decision. There was right. no, it was just standing. And, and you knew. Yeah. 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 Wow. Deep. But it, right? it seems like that was, that was very much yeah. about telling you that Uh to pay attention to your dreams, because in that dream, you were paying attention to your dream. Right. So it's important Mm -hmm. for you now in this real world, in the waking world, to pay attention to your dream uh, and to trust it. So Inception isn't too far off. Dream within a dream within a dream within a dream. See, that movie confuses me so so (laughs) much. I can't watch it because I can't keep up with it. Oh, it's it's amazing. Where are we? What level here? What's going on? What the heck? (laughs) What reality point are we in? But one of the, you know, it's I love dream interpretation. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult to do it for somebody else, even if you have a book, because mm-hmm. yeah, there are common symbols right. and collective mm-hmm. consciousness, Jungian type of things, but uh, it's really about what does it mean to you? And so one of the first yeah. things that I always ask if somebody tells me their dream is what was your state of mind or what were your emotions mm-hmm. right. in that dream? Because if you see a bear and I see a bear, if you're afraid of the bear, then it has a different meaning in your dream than me going up and hugging the bear and we're friends or whatever. So yeah. just because you see a bear doesn't mean that it's a, an omen or a bad sign or something, right? So right. what is your state of mind in that dream? What were your emotions? Were you afraid or whatever? And so most of the people with these rising water dreams are saying that they weren't afraid, they were calm, yeah. and they just knew to allow it to happen. And it wasn't about saving other people that they knew everything was going to be okay. Yeah. So I want to mention what the collective said in October of 2023. And you guys can go listen to the full transcript if you want to. Uh, Messages from the collective for October, which is up on the YouTube channel. And this was when Wendy, our friend, asked about her dream. And what's so cool is I knew nothing about this. And you're like, oh, we just asked the collective about this. And I'm going, well, you know, like that was really cool. See what happens when you miss a month? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Excuse me. All right. And, And this is very very similar to what they said two years prior. The aspect of rising water is the impending change that is taking place. For many that witness a rising water state in their dream, this anticipated state of water that's rising around them or witnessing it from a distance, which is what you did, Mm -hmm. what you're tapping into, what you're connecting to, that vibrational state of rising water is a collective of what's taking place around your planet. It is the rising tensions It is the rising conflicts. It's the rising aspect of a greater change throughout humanity. This this is the water that is rising, that is taking place or washing away and cleansing. And this is exactly what's taking a place on your planet at this particular time. And then it begins to wane and there are no longer the rising water dreams. So they go on to say that once humanity has passed this stage the rising water dreams will slow down or stop. Mm -hmm. And then when things amp up again during another era or cycle Mm -hmm. on our planet, then that might be another metaphorical way of helping you to understand what's happening. That's so trippy. And what they go on to say, because after that, I did ask on that channeling, I said, well, it seems like it's important what your emotional state is during that dream. And they said, yes, this is correct. They said, if you're in a peaceful state, you're being an observer If you're feeling as if you're being over-consumed or consumed by any impending water, or if you're interacting with the water itself, now you didn't actually interact because it came up to your feet, right? Mm -hmm. This may be a closer approach to your consciousness that there's something that's changing. Mm -hmm. You're in a deeper connection point to what is taking place, either around the planet or nearby, wherever you are in existence. So I wonder if they mean then uh, usually we're seeing the water from a distance right? yeah. rising, but now maybe people's dreams and tell us if this is happening to you guys out there, mm. maybe the dreams now, the water's coming up and lapping up at your feet or rising a little higher. That might mean we're mm. closer to whatever mm-hmm. is about mm-hmm. to erupt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Could be. What do you think? Yeah, no, I mean, definitely. I, the, the difference between that first dream 
<laughs> well, I mean, there's so there's no comparison. Like it's, but um, both the sense of calm, you know, was it was like I, I loved it. Like it was a yeah. really really mm-hmm. nice feeling. Um, I, I'm just sitting there thinking about when you talk about how you're closer to it. And I'm just going through my mind. Well, could it mean that like, I started thinking, well, is it that I'm closer to the events or is it just that there's shift happening, happening around me mm-hmm. um, specifically? And that's why I'm feeling pulled into it or because so much is changing with the way that I am perceiving reality or whatever. I like, it's hard to know. Um, it, it's, I, it's, I would say that it's probably, a mix of all of it, because I mean, right now, everything is so fluid, um, you know, within the, with, within the world itself Mm -hmm. and within our own, um, our own lives, everything is so fluid right now, because, you know, uh, just, just take, just take your, your, a personal life. It doesn't matter whether it's yours, mine, Allison's or whoever, but think about how you, how you operate your life and how, it's it's done now versus how it was done say five or ten years ago five or ten years ago it was pretty much on autopilot Mm -hmm. right you just you just knew what you needed to do the money was there the food was there the gas was there the travel was there everything there was nothing to even think about nothing you know you didn't really have to put a lot of thought into it or a lot of discussion into it or a lot of pre-thought or whatever we move forward now past the big C and you have to give thought. You have to, you have to, I'll prepare, right? You have to, for the smallest things, you know, do I, do I, do I have enough to do this? Do I, should I take that, that travel? Should I, you have to question pretty much everything. So it's, it's a combination of everything that's being presented to you now and the world as a whole. So you're saying our constructive reality has been shattered. Yes. Yeah. But not only should I do this, but do I want to do it? Right. This? Or do it right. So do that's what the do. big C pushed people into a corner to decide. Right. Do I even like this job? Do I want oh, to go yes. back to this job? Yes. So now we're being what? introspective yeah. and we're getting in touch with our feelings. Right. Yeah. Feelings or consciousness are or your are, own are truth. reality. Yeah. Your own truth. Our, our true reality. Mm-hmm. Right? Like what is your mission? What is your contract? Was it? To work in an office desk job forever, because Probably when you're not. when you're in that complacent state of five or ten years ago, yeah. you're in that complacent state of of just some people call it the mundane activities of the of life. You don't really need to go the muggle world, right? Or you don't yeah. need to go inward to to figure out the the higher aspect of something because it's it's all and that's exactly place. what the collective said that unfortunately or fortunately humans learn through chaos yes so yes. when yeah. something drastic yeah. you have your dark night of the soul or something mm-hmm. drastic pushes you over the edge mm-hmm. you find a way to mm-hmm. change to succeed to go inward to whatever that is to your truth I, and right I, you know i'll speak from that from my own personal you know experiences I, I, you know my <clears throat> being a military career person you know, everything you, you, you do everything set to a timeline, an agenda you have, you know, you wake up at a certain time, you do a certain thing, you do a certain thing, you do a certain thing, then you go to sleep, right? It's Mm -hmm. that's wash, rinse, repeat. Well, since 2020, I've struggled with that aspect of, you know, Oh God, what, what, what if, (laughs) what if I don't, what if, what if this job, I have to get rid of this job or what if, what if this takes place? What if I have to make this decision and what if I have to, and it was, it was so overwhelming that I, I, you know, I mean, it brings on a lot of anxiety, but the the, the world is filled with that right now. Right now. Yeah. (laughs) But what I've learned is I can't, I can't set an agenda for my, for my daily activities. I, for me personally, mm-hmm. my day flows as it should. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that take place each day that I have to readjust my sales to take another tact at an approach that was just presented to me mm-hmm. Right. where before I wouldn't, I wouldn't easily adjust to that. Right. I, I would struggle with that. I'd be like, okay, well, 
God, what if I make this decision? And I, God, I don't know. Maybe this is, this is the wrong decision. Maybe, maybe this isn't going to be the thing I'm supposed to be doing, but I need to do it. And uh, uh, <laughs> my head would explode. Now it's like, okay, well, you know, I mean, I, you know, I, this year, 2023 for us, you know, I, the business has been great, but to a point at which else is like, yeah, you know, I think you might want to entertain picking up a side job. Something happened over the summertime, like yeah, energy mm-hmm. shifted. And, and yeah. most people who do the kind of work we do yeah. were just, it, it almost was pushed into a up. corner. It was, yeah. yeah, it was the weirdest thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I struggled with making that decision. I really don't want to go back to work. I don't want to go back into work. And it's not so much that you don't want to work. It's that you knew that this was your passion and your mission. Right. Yeah. If this is what you're supposed to be doing, why isn't it? That's correct. Exactly. (laughs) But what I've, what I've found is a new flexibility that I didn't have. Uh, That's what I, that's what this has pushed me towards is a new flexibility that I hadn't had before. Meaning, okay, I'll do some contract work. Okay. I'll pick up this little side job. Okay. I'll do these things. It's, it has nothing to do with the metaphysical space whatsoever, but I'll just pick up this little bit here. I'll contract myself out here to do this work. I'll do these little things that now is just incorporated into my everyday lifestyle where now I don't even, it's like, I have, I can juggle it all before it was like, I don't know if I can juggle all these balls mm-hmm, right. right now. I know so that's what you mean by fluidity. Well, when you right. said fluidity, I was thinking, in terms of, um, which I think still applies, um, you know, Bashar and a bunch of other mm-hmm. um, channelers have mentioned that um, this is the first time that we know of in the history of the human experience where we come in with these contracts, but they're alterable mm-hmm. within real time. Mm-hmm. So right. you come in thinking this is what, you know, like we don't sit there and go, I know this is what I'm supposed to do, but you're following a path and you're like, you know, determined and something comes in and you just go left. Like yeah. it is such a strong left yeah. mm-hmm. and people are, you know, and, and I, I saw that, especially down on Hilton head where, you know, with, with what happened in 2020 mm-hmm. that all of a sudden um, people were just going, yeah, I don't like this job anymore. I'm doing this now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it's just like, okay, people needed to be repositioned. They knew they needed to be right. in different places. Um, and it would be like irrational moves. Like right. in, you know, yeah. a, a year ago, six months before, three months before you would have never done something <laughs> right. like that. You know, because like you pay the bills, you do this, you do this. And all of a sudden it was just like, all bets are off. And right. Um, so that's what I was thinking about the fluidity that we're we're literally shifting on the fly. I, I'll I'll bring up a uh, an experience I had. We'll let you talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think Allison knows what I'm going to talk about. But the, yeah. <laughs> the, this I had a I had an experience um, uh, <clears throat> that I went into a uh, into a journey to 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 get some clarity about something, and I had this profound conversation with a higher being. And I, I, even to this day, I don't know at what dimension or what the being, who the being was, but I just knew the consciousness that I was connected Mm. to was much higher than anything else that I had connected to in a while. And the information that was coming through was that, um, timelines our our human timelines that we exist on, that we have contracted with, that we've done all this stuff needed to be recalibrated. And that was the word that was used. They needed to be recalibrated hmm. because they were, um, they were, uh, things were happening more rapidly or uh, coming yeah. out of adjustment. Right. Um, and this was, this was uh, probably 2021 ish that this was taken. That two this, years yeah. In. Two years ago that, that this took place. And what, so there was a lot more that came through, but the, what the, the main statement that stuck with me was that um, in essence, all timelines, pretty much all timelines were stopped. Okay. And there wasn't a continuation point, but a freedom to create beyond that. Basically. Maybe that's what's creating the anxiety. <laughs> well, it, I, <laughs> it, can. it can. It can. Yeah. Because there's uncertainty on the other side right. of that, yeah. not, not knowing. But it gives us this flexibility of being yeah. able to do things that we've never done before. And this is what we've seen take place after mm-hmm. 2020 is that, like you say, people who wouldn't normally just up upheave themselves out of a job that they were in that they had forever and then thrust themselves into something that is so foreign to them, but mm-hmm. yet now it's something they love. 
It's something they enjoy. That's that creative aspect of a timeline that's changed for all of us. Many of us have not grasped that, but many of us have. Many of us understand that there is flexibility within our own contract to mm-hmm. live an existence of doing what we truly love to do. Now, does that mean that it's going to pay all the bills? No. <laughs> or that the path's <laughs> going to be smooth and right. straight forward. Right. And right. Still, well, when you start honoring yeah. that for yourself, when you start mm-hmm. honoring that aspect of that creative aspect of self, and it is truly your passion, then other things are going to fall into place to ease you through it. But you have to take that step. Yeah. Right. And these are two themes that you guys are bringing up, which I wrote down, which is, it, it is being, you're already there. <laughs> being flexible. Yeah. We have to be flexible, which means you have to be okay with uncertainty. Yes. So uncertainty makes us very comfortable, very uncomfortable, which yeah. is why we're creatures of habit, which is why mm-hmm. we're on autopilot all the time. Because mm-hmm. if something gets thrown in our path, oh yeah, yeah, we don't want to deal with that. We want to be able to just go blind and uh, keep mm-hmm. on trucking. Um, and so the, the collective has mentioned on many occasions about the, the, the opportunity is ours, Mm -hmm. but with opportunity comes responsibility. And that means people are responsible for their lives. And And this is scared to make the wrong choice. Right. And there's no wrong choice. This is why we talked about sovereignty a couple of episodes ago, because we're so used to abdicating our authority to others, giving away our power, letting other people be responsible for our lives. Mm. Um, but but we can't do that anymore. We have to take responsibility for our own and create what we want. So you cannot just sit here and allow your contract to play out and allow things to happen to you. It's about you creating what you want. Yeah. But that takes responsibility. It takes you actually being an active participant in your life, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, and so these are all themes that aren't necessarily related to a water dream, but they are it's what the collective has mentioned and mm-hmm. what we're hearing from lots of guides about the the keywords and the themes that need to take place as we move forward. Well, I think it is relevant to the to the water dreams of because if we're seeing our water dreams, they're representing that aspect of standing in your truth because right. we're feeling confident right. or mm-hmm. comfortable with what is taking place. That yeah. means we're standing steadfast in our truth and we believe where we're standing is our reality at that point. It's so. even that just even the awareness, the acknowledgement of that. Like the, you wouldn't have come on, like in right. the eighties, we would not be having this no, conversation I like agree. this I mean, or, or the segment of people that would be having a conversation. And now it's, it's like, you meet groups of people who is just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I was thinking the other day, 2019, like, yeah. 2019 we would, we would, yeah. Right. You know, it's, it's so, yeah, I think the whole thing is shifted pretty profoundly. Yeah. And I think in that, like, I do want to touch in on anxiety because I brought up anxiety um, and that's such a trigger with so many people. Mm-hmm. And I happened to be having a conversation with a friend of mine, who's also a client. And, um, you know, I started to talk about, like, I don't, I can't remember. Oh, cause she, um, because she's on um, medicine, somebody else she knows is on medicine. I said, mm-hmm. well, you know, a lot of people are on anxiety medication and you could say, and, and I think this is a culmination of a lot of different things. Um, but I started kind of going through it going, okay, well, never before in humanity, have we had all this information yeah. at our fingertips, Whew. never in humanity have we been controlled by the information at our fingertips. Like it's just controlling us there. It's trying to move us agendas one way or the other, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, much less that even like what's supposed to be your safe space, your, your home space that's supposed to be, I, I hate to say, so, like your sacred space. Sure. Sure. You know, you, um, you don't want to say safe space. Yeah. <laughs> That it's um that it's no longer like it, because you allow those portals yeah. of information to come through, but it even goes beyond that. Like because you could sit there and turn off the TV, you could do this that, um, but there's so much opinion on you know well I am this and you're that, mm. so there's that, but then we have this whole ascension stuff happening, which animals are responding to it and we're the same thing, you know? So like there is this level of ramping up that's occurring that we're all like, you just don't realize that you're responding to it. Right. And so I think that we're medicating a lot of people Mm -hmm. because they are picking up on this stuff and they don't know how to identify, like knowing what it is, you can sit there and go, Oh, I mean, like knowledge, just the the awareness of it. You can go, oh, okay, I'm going to take a deep breath. This isn't me. This is what right. I'm feeling around me. It's okay. Because the worst thing that could happen is what you die. 
And that's not the worst thing. Um, to me, the worst thing is that it's a long, slow, painful death. Anyway, right. sorry. Um, but it, it, it's, I think that the more that these conversations come out and we talk about it and people, cause right now they're just like, I don't know. I'm just anxiety ridden. I'm just like, and what that does, like, even as I start to talk about it, I start to go like, you know, it's like you're in this small little, and it makes you stop thinking. Correct. Um, it makes you stop owning yourself. Like it's, it's almost a control mechanism on its own to like yeah. make you small, weak, but defenseless and controllable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Think about the energy of anxiety and how much of that, energy of anxiety has crept into, like you say, into every aspect of existence right now. And, you know, 10, 15 years ago, those that were energy sensitive, pretty much I'll say could go virtually anywhere, right? They (laughs) they could, they could just freely live their lives, but those that are energy sensitive or overly energy sensitive now have a very hard time leaving their house. Yep. They, you know, even just to go to the grocery store or, or to go buy a pair of shoes or go fill up their car with gas. Mm-hmm. It's not that they're, it's not that they're anxious. It's just that the, the anxiety the energy collective. that is collectively right. in, on our planet right now is so tangible. And that's what's represented in yes, the water. Yes, right. water. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's full circle. <laughs> but the water is cleansing. Yes. So it also represents this idea of cleansing. Purifying, and cleansing. Clearing, yep. And that's what's going to be happening in 2024. Mm-hmm. Well, and the more that you stand in your truth, the more that you get what's going on, what's around yeah. you. And like your truth is not the same as my truth. Nope. Your truth might be, you know, you live, you die, there you go, you know, and that's fine, but you're, you're firm and you're confident and you know, whatever. And mine is more multidimensional, but it it gives you that ability to like, as long as that's what really truly resonates, mm-hmm. you're really feeling that, you know, there's a lot more, you can take the punches a lot mm-hmm. more. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is no, that a I, true statement? Absolutely. I, I, I agree with that. I mean, it's it comes down to the fact that if you had a true statement to me, that's supposed to be with you guys. We say yes, it is. It's true. <laughs> if if I'm standing in front of you and you're speaking your truth, and I know you're speaking your truth from who you are, mm-hmm. I can't argue with you. I there's I you know I might not agree with it. Yeah. But I can't. Or you argue can with explore it. it. I can yeah, absolutely, Which and is I can, very <laughs> I can learn more, and that's what we need. Learn more. more. We need that more. We need more of that. That's but, what I'm saying. That's why the anxiety is happening because people, they're just shut down from the judgment and the opinions instead of. Well, I'm curious why you feel that way. Yeah. Oh my God, would that not be an amazing conversation just to turn around and <laughs> validate? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Good. <laughs> no, right. But if you're genuine, yes, that is mm-hmm. a, a wonderful thing to do. But courage of your conviction. Have you heard that? We've heard that phrase. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah. The courage of your conviction. The reason that they say that is because when you are convicted or when you know your truth, when you know something without a shadow of a doubt that this is your mission, this is what yes. you're supposed to be doing, you're not afraid. Right. You don't have time to be afraid. You don't even think it doesn't come into your thought process. So like, if you think about yourself getting up and doing a TED talk on whatever, it petrifies you. You're standing there, you're shaken and you're scared. But when it's something that you have a passion about sharing with someone and you, mm-hmm. and this is your forte and you, you understand yep. it and you're an expert in this you field, it. you own it. And you're not even afraid. You get up there and you want to share out of love, out of your heart space. So that's what we're talking about is getting into your heart space. That's where your truth resides. Again, watch the truth episode, but it's not about your opinion. It's mm-hmm. about your truth from your contract, your truth from your heart, what you're here mm-hmm. to do and to accomplish and your mission and how you're to interact and impact people. And when you act yeah. from that space of truth, you're not afraid. There is no reason to be afraid. And so when these things come at you, like they're going to do in the next, I don't know, six to eight months, you can think straight. It's it, uh, as you're spe- You can act correctly. As you're speaking, I'm I'm... You know, call it a, a vision or whatever, but it's interesting how how this is playing out. It's like, you know, hopefully I'll be able to put it all in the right words because it flashed in front of me very quickly. When when I think this is why we have the the conversational issues we have right now in society is the fact that many people they they espouse they're speaking their truth, but really they don't understand their own truth. They, they, they don't, mm-hmm. they don't understand they're where they are. They're borrowing someone else's. They're yes. borrowing somebody yes. else's truth. Yes. They're, yes. they're, they're taking somebody else's headline. They're, they're, they're just, mm-hmm. they're just, you know, and so when you stand in front of them and you speak their, you speak your truth and you know 
it is your truth. You're, you're steadfast on that. They don't understand how to respond to that other than by getting louder and talking screaming points. And, right. It's, it's the talking points. So there's a, there's, there's a, there's a, as we, you know, we've said this in the metaphysical space for a while that the veil is thinning and, and, and more things are accessible, right? Mm-hmm. Well, in the same way on the physical plane, yeah. that, that veil of, of, of truth that, that is in front of you, that is, that is either thinning or strengthening. Meaning for those that don't stand in their truth, but they're just speaking the points. Mm-hmm. It's, it's easy to see through that. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's going to be more uncomfortable for them to it, continue it, to do that. Exactly. So, and I think that has, again, you know, we can talk all we want about what happened in 2020, but I think really what took place is this overall consciousness changeover, this, yes. this point yeah. of, yeah. of reckoning where, you know, we can't hide behind somebody else's truth any longer. Right. We have to stand in our own and we have to speak our own. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we right. stand in somebody else's truth and we try to speak somebody else's truth, it's uncomfortable. It's foreign to us. Which is why I I will say, if you are new on this journey and you don't, and a lot of this doesn't make sense in terms of what really do I believe? And you're really, how do I go back to it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, journey within that I wrote talks about all of this. And and in the very beginning, I'm talking about beliefs because that was the reckoning I had to have was these Christian beliefs that I grew up with, that I espoused, that I would defend, that I would argue with people about, Mm -hmm. were they really mine? Yeah. And so I, I go into that about where do these beliefs come from? Are they yours? How can we figure that out? Maybe they are yours, but you got to get to the root of it. We got to uncover, uh, go within. That's why it's called the journey within and mm-hmm. and find that truth. And it isn't easy necessarily because ever since you're born, everybody's telling you their truths yeah. and you adopt yeah. it, whether yeah. it's your parents, yeah. Did you your coach, your teacher, your right. pastor, your whoever, everybody is piling this on and all the way up to your government and all of these things. So you read a headline and you're thinking, oh yeah, yeah. And you go out and fight and march against Monsanto or fight for Republican or Democrat or whatever you're doing. Yeah. But why is it really your belief? And, it, and it's just that it's putting a question mark in, in front of a lot of the things that you thought were your truth or, you know, or you believe in start questioning your own, mm-hmm. your own evaluate those. Yeah. Evaluate your own well, place. I'm thinking about last fall, about this time last year, um, when all of a sudden, like what it, what it feels like when you step into your truth, where you're like, oh my God, I get it now. It was such a, I mean, I don't think, it wasn't like I was meditating. I have no <laughs> idea what I was doing, but it was just walking around, reading. I was doing something that was kind of innocuous. And all of a sudden there was this awareness, this shift that happened. And I was like, Oh my God, you know, this is who I am. I Mm -hmm. must have been saying Mm -hmm. something or doing something. And it was such a profound, like, there's no going back. Oh my Mm -hmm. God, I'm owning this. And especially for people who are light workers and stepping out, like, you know, the FOMO, not FOMO, the, um, the, uh, fear of imposter syndrome and that kind of Mm -hmm. stuff, you know, that, that we're, we're scared. Someone's going to call us out that we're especially me not doing it right, the right way or the way other people do it, you know? (laughs) And when that happened, like it was so profound, of course, I called Allison. I'm like, oh, my God. she's like, yeah, it feels good, doesn't it? You know, and it's like, you know, I don't know if this is my last shift. It certainly couldn't be because we're in a no. constant state of expansion yeah. and growth. But but when I moved into that space, it was like, boom, and it unshakable. Yes. Like all yep. of a sudden, this yes. is who I am. This is, and it was literally based on no one else. Uh, no, no one else. I can't speak anymore. <laughs> um, but it was based on no one else. It had nothing to do with buying into a concept or ideal. In fact, when I moved into that shift, all of a sudden I realized, oh my God, all bets are off now. Mm-hmm. Like the world's wide open. I'm writing a clean new page. What is this going to be? Right. And that was you know, and it's taken me a year to really, it's only at this point that I'm really beginning to step into the fullness mm-hmm. of it mm-hmm. um, and do some of the stuff that was kind of frightening for me to sure. do before, you know, step into a yep. mentor role, a leader role and, mm-hmm. um, and whatever that means. Or looks that like. is beautiful. But, and you know yeah. how, you know, when you're there mm-hmm. is when you're not defensive, when somebody can say something yeah. to you, and your defense doesn't rise up because when you're defending a position mm. that isn't yours, right. 
then you don't have that courage of conviction yeah. and you yeah. feel like you need to argue. And we talked about this in the other podcast about truth. So we won't get into that too much, yeah. but yeah, I love how these, all of these topics kind of interweave mm-hmm. and um, come together it's to create it, yeah. this big picture mm-hmm. of what we want to share with you all. Um, and so, yeah, that it's was fun to explore it. It's just, yeah. I yeah, love it that. really it's, is. Yeah. And so we were curious if you guys have had your own mm-hmm. rising water dreams. And if so, how did you feel? What was your emotional state? Uh, did the water encroach on you personally, or was it at a distance? Those types mm-hmm. of things. Yeah. Let us know, hit us up in the comments. And if you like what you're seeing, hit the notification bell and share and like the video. It really does help to get more eyes on it for those people who need it during this time um, that we're entering into specifically in yes. 2024. Yeah, but sure. um, thanks again to all of you who are our faithful viewers. We so appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. See you guys. Bye.